Hey everybody, this is just a quick update. Woke up this morning excited because Legion Space got an update to 1.0.2.2. Yeah. <laughs> and it has brought some changes beyond bug fixes, which is going to be awesome. When I opened it up and it loaded, the first thing I saw is the UI is dark or darker. You can still see the blue around the outlines of the edges, but it is darker. It still scrolls at about 15 FPS and who knows about the functionality, but I'm glad that they're trying. There are three big things that I noticed in this update and I wanted to make a quick video to share them with other people in case you missed it because not everybody looks at release notes, nor do I, but for this I am. I mentioned in the previous video a couple of days ago when I unboxed this that the quick settings button was a little annoying how it brought up the left menu on every other press. They have fixed this. That is the best part so far. You click the quick settings menu, it brings up strictly the quick settings. To get to the other menu, you're just going to have to go into Legion Space and click menu on the bottom left. Not a big deal. I don't think many of us are utilizing the Legion Space as of yet. The second largest thing I saw before I even read the release notes is boot automatically into Legion Space. Toggle that off. <laughs> It's not that bad, but it just it, it starts to get annoying after a while, especially if you constantly turn this thing off instead of hibernate. I do recommend hibernate instead of sleep, but for sleep, I haven't had really any issues. The only thing I was worried about is putting this to sleep and sticking it in a backpack or a bag and having the airflow be impeded and causing it to overheat, which inevitably it would shut off, I'm sure, but you know, I like to take care of my things. So hibernate is the way. That was a side note. Super excited to have that. I tried to go into MS config. I went into load up stuff. I poked around a little bit deeper, but not deep enough to find ways to disable this. Just a test, even though I figured it would knock out some of the hardware functionality within the system. I just wanted to see if I could somehow get that to boot minimized. This should do it. It's great that they put this in there now. Awesome. So when you boot it up to Windows, it should just be expedient like it is on everything else. The third big ticket item, for this particular update is got to be the announcement of VGA drivers coming soon within today or the next three days. I think they said 72 hours. This is good because I think their previous one, and don't quote me on this, is July or something. And you probably wanna install their special built drivers for functionality of all the other things on here. You can also sideload AMD and do the very quick updates that are consistent. For example, this Legion laptop here, it has an NVIDIA GPU, but I run into the same instance. I need their custom built Lenovo GPU drivers that are built on top of NVIDIA's monthly releases because that enables me to use the hub with this particular laptop. I think many others too. If I just load NVIDIA's direct driver, which updates every month, game or studio, which is a great option to have, then it disables the hubs for me. I've tried multiple ones. Maybe I can get a different brand that's supported. I don't know, but NVIDIA's terms on it where we don't directly support hubs. So it's up to you to figure that out yourself. <laughs> that's what they told me. So that's kind of terrible, but I did get it to work by using Lenovo's VGA drivers. And that is the case with that, but they update those once every six months. So I hope that's not the case with this. And again, if you're running into issues with AAA games and whatnot, just sideload AMD and I'm probably going to run through that in the video that I do with the full review or maybe a separate video. Another thing they have is the DPI settings for the FPS mode. This is cool if you want more resolution and higher reaction time, I guess, in your FPS games or whatnot. For me, I think I'm going to stick with 800, but I did test the other ones and they really do make a difference. It's great that we have these. You go into Legion Space, you go into the settings menu, and you go to controller. FPS mode has to be on, it has to be locked in its little orientation. Then you see that, for example, like that. Now FPS mode's on, it changes to FPS controller mode, and then in here, you see mouse DPI settings. You have 500, 800, 1200, and 1800. I'm going to stick with 800, but 1800 makes this thing jump across the screen with very minimal movement. For using a screen this small, I'm going to stick with 800. If you're using an external monitor, you may want to bump it up. Awesome that we have that. I did get a chance to try this with Call of Duty Modern Warfare just for a split second, 
and there are dead zones in the joysticks. I know they're working on this. Apparently in this release, they have notated that they're working on this and FPS mode dead zones, which I wasn't aware of, but that is a thing for some people. And hopefully they fix that. I've never gamed on something this small playing Call of Duty. I'm used to a larger monitor, 120 hertz at least, etc. But it works if the joysticks were better. So playing with this small area, 8.8 .8 is probably the minimum for me. I do have 20-20 vision. It's not a vision thing. It's just sort of, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to, to see people and they're so small. You have to just, you know, really focus. So the screen size is just there. It works. But you have to play with an external controller at this point if you want to competitively game with any FPS, at least Call of Duty. That's how I feel. Playing with the joysticks, it just wouldn't work at this moment in time. But they are working on it, so that's great. One thing I did see on the bottom of the release notes is they clarified there are three gyros, one for each controller, one in the main unit. I looked around and maybe I didn't get that, but apparently there might be some sort of integration of on and off with that. I would love to turn off the gyro for Windows without having to hack it somehow because when you click the Windows logo to pop up the little menu and you turn it, it just instantly shuts down. I find that so annoying after a while because the angle you're doing that at, right where it turns off, is the angle most people play at when they're leaning and looking down it's right in your vision line <laughs> so it makes no sense i will figure out how to turn that off and update they also listed things coming in the near future probably within the next month custom fan curves this is custom fan curves is a really good one for people because i I've, I've noticed that a lot of people are reporting these hover in the 50 to 60 range on pushing <laughs> high-end games to their max limits and these can run i'm Pretty sure, again, don't quote me on this, these can run significantly hotter than that. I think a lot of AMD chips are built to run really hot. I want to say in the 90s Celsius. So people who are bothered by the fan can possibly turn the fan curves down and just let their unit run hotter and probably have no other consequences. That's going to be a good thing to mess with if you know what you're doing or at least are guided through. And that should help a lot of people who are really sensitive to the fan noise. Talking about fan noise, again, I have been using this for about a week now, here and there, and I really don't notice it that much. With the high-pitched, it, it is a little high, but I, I have been struggling to notice it, so I don't think it's a thing. They never really jump up high, not even close to putting it on max fan, the toggle you can do. The sound, the sound has been better than expected, which is awesome. This thing has garbage speakers, and it's better than this, so that's a good thing. It's not on, not on par with my Asus laptop, but they're doing fairly decently. The EQs help. Yes, they do. But I haven't had to run this over 50% to bypass fan noise or anything like that or cover it up with some games that are really taking some energy out of this thing. So that's good. The sound is better than I thought. Not great, but better than I thought. And it looks like they've addressed that. I think in the update they're saying, oh, worst case, you can go to the Realtek. I think Realtek's... EQ settings menu if you don't want to install any third party, but realistically, just install a third party and make it easier on yourself. They're also going to bring an FPS limiter into the settings, so you have a choice of doing it on the interface here or doing it in-game to possibly tweak things and optimize at a better level. They said they implemented some custom key controller customization options. I didn't poke through to see it, but they are there and they're going to put more in the next update. So that's always good. One last thing is they're going to do UMA frame buffer options, which to my knowledge is adjusting the VRAM, which is great for your GPU to have more dedicated RAM and significantly help your games. A lot of people I think are having issues with only getting about two gigabytes of VRAM. Maybe that was a thing of the past. I haven't been on the ball with it lately but it says they will probably implement a six gig option and an auto. So auto maybe just be a set and forget, that will be great. So I'm looking forward to that one and hopefully that helps out some of the AAA game titles run on this thing. All in all, it looks like they're doing great work with this. Looks like they're going to be consistent, fingers crossed, hopefully that is the case, but this update has brought quite a bit of things that are significant. And if you haven't got yours yet, just hang tight. It's almost there, I'm sure, and it's super fun and it's going to be exciting. So. Hopefully that helped you out. Subscribe for more and I will see you on the next video. Take care everybody.